Hey guys, it's Ellen and today I'm going to be doing a review for a book that I just finished yesterday and that is At the Water's Edge by Sarah Gruen. Um, this is the second book that I've read by Sarah Gruen, the first being Water for Elephants. And Water for Elephants is actually one of my favorite books. I really, really enjoyed that one. So I was excited to try this one and I really, really enjoyed it as well. So this book takes place in two locations, the first being Philadelphia and the second, uh, the Highlands of Scotland. And it's both in the year 1944. So it is near the end of World War II. The majority of the book takes place in Scotland, um, but the premise is it's these three individuals, Maddie, Ellis, and Hank. Um, Maddie and Ellis are married, and Hank is a family friend. Um, Hank and Ellis are very, very tight, and the main character is Maddie, the wife. So Hank and Ellis get it into their head that they need to go um, to the Highland the highlands of Scotland in order to find the Loch Ness Monster. Um, Ellis's father had originally, years ago, had tried to find the monster in the same location and had supposedly seen it, um, but there was, you know, controversy about whether or not the, fi the photos that he had taken were fake. So Ellis decides that it's very important for him in order to maintain his pride and to finish what his father started. He has to go to Scotland and find this monster and Hank plays along. And all three of these individuals are from very wealthy families. They're from high society and they tend to go to a lot of parties, do a lot of drinking and um, don't have a lot of responsibilities in life. So when they head across the Atlantic on the SS Mallory, it is a wake up call for them uh, because they didn't realize how intense and real the war is and they were sort of thrown in the middle of it and it was not a good decision for, of the, for them to be traveling at this time. When they arrive in Scotland they end up staying at an inn um, and the individuals who own this inn are not too excited to have these uh, privileged American individuals staying with them. They uh, refer to them as privi privileged interlopers and Hank and Ellis and, at the, and initially Maddie as well. Um, they don't treat the the help, which is how they see the people who own this inn. They don't treat them very well. Um, they are, expect, you know, their stuff to be put away. They expect to be ha waited on hand and foot. And that is not exactly how this place runs, especially during wartime. As Ellis and Hank are trying to catch footage of the monster, Maddie spends a lot of her time with the people who own the inn and from there she develops a relationship and she sees herself changing as a person um, while spending time with these people. One of the big themes in this book is water and I feel that in this book water has a very different meaning than in a lot of other books. In a lot of other stories it can symbolize like rejuvenation, um, and really really positive things but I think in this book actually when I the way I saw it was something um, more like the unknown. Um, so, it, for example, when they're going across the Atlantic on the SS Mallory and it's an extremely difficult and um, intense ride that they're thrown d really right into, the, into a war zone, it's a very negative thing for them and also they weren't expecting it. Then later in the book when they're looking for the monster in the lock, the water is again seen as some sort of an unknown it can be seen as sort of a negative thing that houses this monster. Another time that water plays into the story is one of the people who uh, works at the inn, his wife had actually committed suicide in the water, so it sort of symbolizes an ending. Um, so I thought that was sort of an interesting interpretation. I mean, of course, I could be interpreting it very differently than the author meant it or differently than other people who read this book have, can see it. But that's how I saw it. And I thought it was actually quite interesting because it's a different take on the idea of water than I am used to. Another big theme in this book is, sadly, domestic abuse. Um, this comes into play more towards the uh, the middle to the end of the book, uh, but there's definitely tension in a lot of the relationships in the story. There's one sort of subplot where the um, one of the individuals who works at the inn, she is brutally beat by the man that she is dating um, and close to marrying, and it is a very sad and very graphic uh, part of this story. So if that's a trigger for you, then definitely you know, either stay away from this book or be, know that this is, there is some of that included in this. Um, and then that dysfunctional relationship is sort of mirrored in the relationship between Maddie and Alice. 
One of the things I found really interesting is how Ellis, the character of Ellis, is sort of presented as this. He's he's like a spoiled brat and he's annoying, but he seems really harmless in the beginning of the book. And then as the story progresses, he just becomes more and more dangerous. And the things that made him just annoying in the beginning of the book really come into play and um, really escalate in a way that makes him actually seem like the monster. Another theme that's really interesting in this book is class divides. Um, so the three main characters are um, very privileged. They come from pri privileged families and they're put into this setting where there is a lot of poverty. Um, it's wartime and people are really struggling um, and they the sort of juxtaposition of their what they expect and what their reality becomes is really interesting and it's really hard to see how they treat the people who work at this inn, um, the sort of service that they expect from them. But then as Maddie sort of strays from that way of thinking, then seeing and, and befriends these people, it then becomes even that much more frustrating when Ellis and Hank uh, treat the people who work at the inn um, so negatively and just with such such ignorance. One of the things I really enjoyed about this book is the setting of the Scottish Highlands. Um, I have never read a book uh, that takes place during the war in this location. I had not really, you know, researched what was happening in this location during World War II. Even though I'm very interested in books that take place during World War II, this particular location is not something that I knew about particularly. The author does a really good job of sort of interspersing little Scottish phrases in the story, which I found interesting, and I think it will be really cool if I had... I, I didn't listen to the audiobook of this, but I think if I had, I would have gotten those a little bit more. They would have made a bigger impact on me, because I find when a story takes place in another location and the author utilizes, um, you know, different languages, phrases from other languages, it, you can really get the feel of that when you're listening to it rather than trying to pronounce it when reading it on a page. But even so, it was still really enjoyable. I absolutely love and appreciate Maddie's transformation in this book. She starts out in the thick of her privilege and the way she drastically changes throughout this book and who she ends up being at the end of the book is so very different than who she is at the beginning of the book. I just find that so very cool. She starts to understand more about herself and by being in this new setting, she can really, um, see a different perspective of her relationship. And I think a lot of the events that happen in this book are very true to how it could have been in that time period. Um, there is a lot of talk of mental health and how um, people view that. And a woman having being diagnosed with an issue in mental health um, is was really seen as something very taboo. So a lot of the themes of Maddie's transformation sort of are reminiscent to me of um, another book that I read. Oh gosh, what was it called? The Awakening. The Awakening by Kate Chopin. So the way that she becomes, you know, more aware of her independence and that she deserves, you know, better than what she has and the fact that she is much more down to earth than the people that she is associating with. A lot of those themes are very feminist and that's something that I really enjoy in stories. Another one of the aspects that I really loved about this story was the historical accuracy. Um, and I'm not just talking about the facts of the historical accuracy, um, but in the um, acknowledgments at the end, uh, the author actually talks about how um, she really wanted to stay true to how the character, the amount of information that the characters would have known at that time. Um, so a lot of times the characters are really ignorant of what is happening in the war. Um, and that's actually very realistic because not a lot of people knew the details of what was happening in the war. Even as stories came out in newspapers about the atrocities in Germany and a lot of other locations and just, I mean, of course, you know the what happened during the war. Even as those came out in newspapers, they the numbers were downplayed. So the statistics and all that sort of information that she has in this story is actually very re reflective of what people would have been seeing in papers at the time. So it's not entirely accurate, but it's accurate for the time, if that makes sense. The way she describes the air raids that happen um, are very realistic and the fact that not everybody knew exactly what 
um, types of planes were which, and there's a lot of confusion during wartime. Uh, I thought that was really accurately portrayed. The fact that this whole story even happened um, with Ellis and Hank and Maddie traveling the Atlantic during wartime is actually an indication of how ignorant people were during this time of how serious the war was because they didn't realize how dangerous that really was um, and ended up being you know, instigating this whole story. So I thoroughly enjoyed this book. Um, I wasn't really sure what I was getting into when I started it. I really did like the characters and their development, but it sort of seemed um, at the beginning that they was just sort of like a lighthearted, like high society kind of book. And I was like, eh. As the story progressed, of course, it got so much more interesting and so much more in depth. And the themes were something that I really connected to. So I definitely would recommend this book to anybody who likes uh, World War II books. It's sort of um, a very different take on a World War II story. I think this cover art is also just absolutely gorgeous. I want to mention that. So yeah, this is a book that I would definitely check out if you're interested in that type of story. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars and I would highly recommend it. Thank you guys so much for watching as always and I will see you in my next one. Bye!